hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about two new NASes arriving right now. They are the Acer Store Drive Store series, the Drive Store 2 Pro and the Drive Store 4 Pro. These are two new value series NASes from the brand following up the AS10 or the AS100 series that came many many years before. But it's worth highlighting that these are not NASes. They're going to be challenging the likes of the Nimbus Store or the Lock Store. These are value series NAS and by value I mean cost effective, I mean affordable. You know, a lot of us are going to throw around words like cheap. Let's be realistic. This is not a NAS that is designed to be a premium grade solution. It's supposed to allow most users on an entry level or their first time NAS purchase to take advantage of some of the modern but arguably more low level services available in a NAS drive. Both are available in desktop form in a two and a four base system. These do arrive with ADM inside. They've got an ARM based processor and DDR4 memory. But it's worth highlighting that it has seemingly borrowed a number of elements from some of the newer releases, more powerful ones like the Locker Store and the Nimbus Store, while at the same time upgrading that on the units that came before it. Now, the first thing a number of you are going to wonder is that CPU. It is an ARM based CPU, but luckily it is that Realtek that we've seen around for the last 18 months to two years. It is the Realtek RTD 1296, a quad core 1.4 gigahertz ARM 64 bit processor expressor. Now that opens the door to 4K transcoding and 1080p transcoding natively, but again, you're not going to see that in the likes of Plex Media Server. It's definitely a step up from the 32-bit ARM Marvel that arrived uh, dual-core in its predecessor in both the 2 and the 4 bay. But what's really interesting is this device arriving with DDR4 memory 2 gig, um, which again is a lovely little amount, not upgradable. It very, very rarely is a, uh, possible to upgrade the memory on these ARM based NAS. Is generally the uh, brands always solder the individual memory modules directly onto the board, and this is no exception. But it's still 2 gig of DDR4 and not the 1 gig of DDR3 that the predecessor had. I think even a fraction le uh, less than that in some models. But it does mean that although you can support a number of the key features in ADM for backups, for storage, for multimedia, for low level surveillance uh, and that kind of thing, it has to be said that any more uh, graphically demanding processes, things like virtualization or again as mentioned Plex Media Server, this CPU is not going to be great or it will not be compatible at all. So do make sure that if you are watching any of my videos or anyone's videos where they talk about ADM, uh, Acer Store's graphical user interface software, that this system is not going to be able to give you the full extent of that. Uh, another reason, it doesn't have an HDMI out on the rear, just like Locker Store and Nimbus Store. This system only has uh, two kinds of port other than power, of course. It has USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports or 5 gigabits per second connections, three of them. It's got a one-touch copy button on the front, which I'm always a fan of, but one decision in its architecture which I think will throw up pluses and minuses for many of you is the fact that it arrives with 2.5 GBE on the rear but in a single port. So on the one hand lovely stuff 2.5 GBE potential 250 megabytes per second and again on a 2 bait or a 4 bait it's going to be very easy to saturate that. However 2.5 gigabit ethernet devices aren't hugely common you know, compared with that of the regular 1GBE. And on top of that, the fact that it only has one port means it's eliminated the ability to do link aggregation. Now, of course, you can get USB to 2.5 GBE adapters, 25, 30 quid, real easy. And we're seeing a lot of switches arrive these days with 2.5 GBE or auto negotiation on existing 5 and 10G switches. But still, nonetheless, I do think there's a number of users that although they'll appreciate that 2.5G does give a little bit more performance, Arguably, they would do better with a couple of 1 GBEs or even two 2.5 GBEs overall, but that may undercut the whole affordability of this solution. Now, it doesn't have things like M2 SSD upgrades. It doesn't really uh, give a huge amount aggressively, but the price tag, although not 100% confirmed, is going to be considerably more affordable than the Nimbus Store and the Locker Store. And for a low-level backup, or to add as an existing backup system to another layer of your data storage strategy and backup strategy, this is going to be quite an appealing decision for those that are keeping it within a single brand. We have to highlight, of course, as mentioned, that that CPU, they're not the first ones to do this. That CPU has been around now for quite a number of years, and I know some of the brands are going to be touching on their more 
uh, cost-effective devices at the end of this year looking at a newer generation of ARN there's a couple of them floating around which I do believe the brands are probably going to be focusing on for their next upgrades but that's still quite a while away and this is still a very very affordable NAS by all accounts I look forward to telling you more about it in reviews coming soon and of course comparing it against the likes of the 220J and the TS230 from Synology and QNAP respectively, so stay tuned for that. There's more information on this with regards to power consumption, with regards to abilities, just head into the description where there's a link to a full breakdown of the hardware and software specifications of this device and our thoughts on it. Other than that, if you are interested in learning more, click subscribe as we talk about this device and others even more throughout 2021, and click like if you've enjoyed the video so I know that this is the sort of thing you guys are into. Other than that, I will see you next time.